Hey everybody, it's Party Leet. Welcome back to our humble little village in Mana Lords that's so far been sustaining itself on nothing more than a deer herd, a berry deposit, a couple of vegetable gardens, an orchard or two, and uh, ale, I suppose. Not very sustainable, truth be told. And so this session, we are finally going to tap into one of our greatest boons and establish a few farm fields. I've been looking forward to this moment for a very long time. Many of you have been wondering when we'll finally take advantage of this opportunity that we've been given. And, well, now is the time. I think we've finally reached that population. I think we've finally reached that level as well of growth that we kind of need that activity and we're able to sustain it. So, with all that said and done, let's get this party started. And of course, like clockwork, the party starts with a bandit camp being sighted. Let's take a quick look and see where they're situated. Uh, not too far away from me, but you know what? Once bitten, twice shy, I've learned my lesson. We're not going to let them just stay there and wait for the Baron to surprise us. I'm sure he'll show up eventually. He might be popping up with his army somewhere else, and so they're hidden from my view right now, but I'm not going to take any chances. But I'm also not going to slow down my economy. We've managed to amass a decent treasury here, so why not just hire some mercenaries? Let's go ahead and take a look at our options. We've got the Wayward Sons, the Green Caps, the Ravenous Vultures. These guys will show up in Waldbrand. These guys will actually show up in Adelswald, so that's good. These guys in Vayo. Again, I'm not sure how to pronounce these correctly. I apologize. Let's take a quick peek at the map. Where is Waldbrand? Over here. Well, where will they appear from is the question. Maybe I'm just better off bringing them to my uh, home region and then sending them off. Sure. That'll at least uh, get us a certainty of where they're likely to show off. So, uh, green caps, a couple light mercenary infantry, light mercenary archers. It's only going to cost me 90 per month. I can disband them as soon as we've taken care of these bandits, or I can hold on to them until the uh, raid is taken care of as well. But, you know, that's a whole extra month in my service that I probably don't actually need. And while we do have a decent sized treasury now, let's not, let's not waste it, shall we? Uh, let's go ahead and hire the green caps. Let's go. Sign the contract. Yes, please. Let them come through. They'll come marching in from uh, right over there. And we won't waste any time in sending them over. Like I said, once bitten, twice shy. Let's get the job done quickly here. That influence is going to be great for us because it'll allow us to expand our uh, territory. And then we can finally take this rich deposit of iron. And for those of you wondering why I'm still engaging with the uh, brigands and fighting their units and not just uh, waiting for the Baron to, uh, to to pull their units out and then taking the camp, well, it's because eliminating the unit is what gives us our influence, while taking out the camp is what gives us the wealth. So you want to do both if you want to get both advantages, both boons. Anyway, let's go ahead and focus on our uh, development and economy as our mercenaries march off to fight. Uh, what we're going to do is, first of all, establish the essential farmhouse. Without the farmhouse, you can't actually tend to the fields. Families are assigned to the farmhouse, and then from that farmhouse, they're assigned to the various fields, depending on what those fields need. So, let's go ahead and establish this somewhere over here, I'm thinking, because again, in terms of fertility, I mean, everywhere. What I'm thinking, though, and I have been thinking for a while, is this is where our fields will go. There's a patch of uh, fertile soil for barley as well up over here. So we'll do uh, emmer, wheat, and uh, maybe some barley, and we can keep expanding further and further. But don't worry, I'm not going to do one massive field. Uh, it's been pointed out in the comments, and, 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 and yes, I, I totally agree. Those absolutely massive farm fields are much more of a, of a modern thing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. That's my understanding and perception, at least. Uh, so we are going to do many sort of mid-size or small fields, They'll come together to create massive fields, is what I've uh, what I've been trying to say in the past, which maybe I've miscommunicated. Either way, let's go ahead and pop down this uh, farmhouse over here. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. Room for a couple more hitching posts. I'm going to put it up here, just so that the hitching post doesn't get blocked in the future if I want to put more down over here. Let's pop you down like so. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and, while we don't need it right away... We'll pop down the windmill so we have an idea of uh, where it's going to go and how much space it's going to need. Uh, windmill efficiency is impacted by a variety of factors, and we're a little unfortunate here in that uh, I want it to be close to where these storehouses are, because from there it can be taken to the various bakeries that I intend to out of place somewhere in the uh, general area. Um, 
So I, I'd like it to be close to here. Uh, you know, alternatively, I can put down some more housing over here right next to the mill uh, and and uh, and have that work for the bakeries. But either way, I would like the uh, flour to end up at the storehouses here. So I'd like to put the windmill somewhere over here, though I wouldn't be surprised knowing my luck. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah, obviously. It's it's just a little bit more efficient in uh, in these further off places. Oh, and 100% up over here, right where I'm planning on putting my uh, fields down. Hmm. <laughs> Why you gotta do this to me, game? Why you gotta do this to me? Do I want to do this? Do I want to have the windmill over here for 100% efficiency and then haul all the way over to here? Even if I build a little community, right? Like, would I put... Uh, those houses down here, I don't know, it's so far away from the market, we'd have to get them another market, more storehouses. Uh, and then there's the stone deposit right here that needs to be cleared out as well if you want to do that. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and prioritize this because I want to make sure it's done by March. And uh, I don't want people to be too distracted by my manner in the meantime. I'm a generous lord, I prioritize the people, right? Uh, yes, back to the windmill. I'm thinking, you know what, let's just put it down here. Well, we'll take the slight hit in efficiency. Uh, 96%, 97. It's even worse up there. Wonder if I... Oh. Let's, uh, let's not snap to road. Is there a sweet spot? It gets worse up there. Okay. Better down here, right where my buildings are, and so I can't place it. 95%. I think is the best we're gonna get. And I'm okay with that. Oh, 96%? No, I can't place it there. 95%. Alright. Let's go ahead and do something like this. Let's go ahead and do something like that. Hope I'm not going to regret that decision. And the road and come around the bend. Okay, let's do this. Can I actually send the road through here? I can. Oh, and I actually can turn here as well. Wasn't expecting that. So let's do this. And then, can I also put you down this way? Nah. That's okay. Let's do that. Uh, let's go ahead and connect you like this as well. Beauty. So that'll be all well and good. And this, I'm going to take this road down, basically, and use that to split our fields up. If we take a look at fertility, we've got emmer everywhere. Barley is up over here, so we'll use that to kind of guide us, I think. But let's also go ahead and extend this road over this way. And I'm going to figure out exactly how I want to... Something like that, I'm thinking. Sure. And we'll see what comes in over here, you know, after the fact. Uh, I wonder if I get, like, a sheep farm or something. The sheep farm can hold some sheep itself. Uh, but if we want to have, you know, like, a nice massive herd, we'll need to get uh, pastures as well. Not a, not a top priority, but I wouldn't mind actually getting uh, some clothes and stuff going locally as well. We're currently at 26 families with room for one more, so why don't we go ahead and establish an additional burgage plot. Got a bit of a plan for what I want to do. We've already got our... Um, cobbler shop there. So these guys are going to be producing shoes, picking up the leather from here, uh, producing shoes and then popping them over here. Uh, what I want to do instead is get a burgage plot down over here, I think. Uh, have it... Let's see, how big do I want it to be, though? don't necessarily want it to go all the way because I want this to be the, uh, the tailor. I'm thinking. What if, how, how big do I need to make this? Maybe like that, because that leaves room for some more burgage plots down over here, or maybe some interesting things going on in the middle. And this is about as big a space, I think, as these guys will need. So let's go ahead and pop this down, like so. Sure. And so, as I was saying, so this is going to be the tailor. We've got the cobbler over here, and I'd really like to put a storehouse down over here. That'll handle the... Uh, it'll store the hides, it'll handle the leather, and it'll also handle the wool from the sheep. And then it'll supply those to the uh, the tailor and to the cobbler over here. And hopefully that'll create a good system. Now we have our cobbler shop all the way down over here. That I wonder if it won't suffer a little bit. But we'll we'll experiment with this and see how it is. Because it shouldn't be that much further for this family to go to this uh, storehouse as opposed to this storehouse. But again, I want to 
step by step, step by step. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Let's uh, plan. Let's plan for the sheep farm, though. And the more I look at it, the more I wonder if I pop this down over here. Put it down over here somewhere. Get the pasture over here, perhaps. So, you know, from the church, you can see the sheep. I feel like that's a little symbolic as well. <laughs> as opposed to all the way over here, where I don't know where I'd put the pasture down. That feels believable to me. You know, this will all be fields. And yes, with the right technology and stuff, sure, that works. But uh, I don't think we'll get to that tech, given how we've developed uh, so far. I don't want to put it all the way out over here. Hmm... There's a nice big area over here, but then it has to be hauled all the way to, you know, here, if that's where we're storing the wool. That's a long way to go. A long way to go. So, sure, yeah, why not, why not up over here? Feels like a more suitable location, right up against the trees. So we've got our deer herd, our berry deposits, and our, uh, our, our sheep in, like, a general vicinity, I guess. Pop you down where, buddy? I'm planning ahead for where the uh, the pasture needs to go as well. Something like this. Let's do that. <laughs> I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant because I wonder what the smell is going to be like for some of these houses. You know what? They can deal. They can deal. It's already it already must reek in this half of the town because of this uh, tannery. So, you know what? A little bit more uh, aroma isn't going to cause too many heartaches. Poppy down there. Low priority. Windmill, low priority. I don't want people focusing on that. The farmhouse has received all the goods it needs. Excellent. We still have nine timber. Good stuff. The pasture, I'm not in a rush to make it, but I wouldn't mind kind of establishing where it goes. Yeah, room for 30 sheep. I think we'll be fine. That's That seems like more than enough. Got some room for more housing, for more storage and stuff, if we wanted to put more uh, more of that stuff down over here. Yeah, that works for me, I think. And I could go a bit further up, but I like how it, it meets the curve there. Like, if I do something like this, I don't love that shape as much. If I do this, though, that feels a bit better to me. 31, ah, nice. <laughs> Min-maxing uh, <laughs> pasture space. Sure, you know what, let's go with that. Let's commit. The pasture is automatically built. The sheep farm, again, low priority. Now, to actually get sheep, and this is this is why getting into animal husbandry and uh, and farming has taken a bit longer. You can see the investment in resources and time and families when we eventually have to work all of these different buildings. It's extremely high. Uh, now, granted, I am not just doing the farms. I am also doing uh, the animals. As over here, we're engaging in battle. I love that the it's like I can just keep going. You guys, you know what? Actually, let's go ahead and charge in the back. The flanking maneuver over here. Oh, they've broken. <laughs> they broke broken before we could even strike. Cowards, cowards. Now let me check something real quick. Actually, it's been asked in the comments. I don't think archers can loot camps. We'll check. Keep an eye on it. I don't want to, like, lose this because I stopped paying attention. Where is the enemy? They still haven't come up, eh? So maybe I jumped the gun on this, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Back to our task over here. The farmhouse has been completed. That was fast. It's February. That's good. Uh, let's go ahead and not assign anyone to it just quite yet. It, it, we'll wait until um, March. Wait until spring. Well, let's go ahead and establish the actual fields. Now, fields can be any size you want, but they uh, they take time to actually go through every step of the farming process. So we're not going to make it massive like that. We want to have that's also quite inefficient. Yes, they can be partially, you know, tilled and all that stuff as well, but I don't necessarily want to do that. That seems unrealistic, as we already kind of touched on. Uh, instead, I'd like to make smaller fields that are more fully tended to. And I want to, as I described previously, split down... Split down this way. 
That seems like a reasonable path. Sure. I wonder if I if this farmhouse shouldn't have been shifted a bit more this way. We'll have to clear some of these trees out for what I have planned. Let's go ahead and get the uh, field. Oh no, I think we might be okay actually. Get a field like so. 0.5, I wonder if I want to go up to 1. 0.5 might be too small. 0.7. Maybe a little bit further out. Tempting fate here. Like, this is starting to feel a little bit on the large side already. Barley fertility starts up there. Okay, so... I think I like this. Because what we're going to do is establish you here. Point nine's okay. It's... the <laughs> Committing to the, this stuff is so uh, nerve-wracking for me. But I think this will be good. I think this will be good. Yeah, sure. Let's pop you down over there. Now, this is just us planning. This is just us planning where things will go. Next, we'll have our primarily barley fields. I shouldn't say this is our barley field, this is our wheat field, uh, because you do want to participate in things like crop rotation, uh, in fallow um, you know, fields and stuff like that. So I shouldn't be so um, finite in my, in my uh, like describing of these fields. Uh, this barley field, I'll pop down like this. And yeah, there's a bit of uh, reduced fertility in the corner over here, but I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. But it feels a bit more natural. It's like, I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think, uh, you know, medieval societies had such precise understanding of exactly where the line of fertility, you know, shifted such that they would make their uh, field uh, line up with, uh, you know, with that as much as I can do. I'm not I'm not going to. I don't think that feels quite right. Uh, but right, let's go ahead and do this. I want this to be 0.5... Like so. Have to clear that tree out. So that should be good for barley. We can stop importing it. And then the rest of the way down here, just short of 0.5. I wanted to be. It doesn't need to be precise, but I was hoping. Makes sense, I was just 0.9, so. Bit of a fun shape there, can I? There's no midpoint there. I could go out if I wanted to, to get that 0.5. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll get some interesting shapes out over here. We might clear out the trees a little bit uh, over here. I realize I don't want to take out too many of the trees and and uh, ruin the, the Lord's forests, as it were. But I will I will clear the path a little bit over here. The berry bush will probably be my like hard line not to pass. But sure. Let's go ahead and establish you. So those are our fields done. Let's get you on wheat, 60%. Wheat 62%. Oof. Barley 47%. I don't want to leave them fallow. Let's go, let's go ahead. Let's take what we can get. Excess rough, eh? This one I might leave fallow and uh, come back to. This one let's work on wheat. I want to see how much this nets us. All right. Now, I've simply assigned the crops here. They're, again, people aren't actually working them yet. They won't work them until I've assigned people at the farmhouse and it's the right time of year. Like I said, February, we're going to go ahead and uh, assign some people at the farmhouse and they'll get to work right away. We have three unassigned families right now. Do we have any families doing stuff that I don't really want them doing? I don't think so. Everybody seems to be in place once this burgage plot is built. We'll go ahead and upgrade as well. I'm going to make it higher priority. I want to make room for people to arrive come March, and that should give us what we need. Hopefully. All right. Let's turn our attention really quickly to the situation over here, because our uh, our town is managing itself. We're okay. I just want to see what happens with the bandit camp. I guess we're not in a rush beyond uh, my, my, my desire to disband this mercenary... Uh, troop here because he'll otherwise charge me another 90 uh, right out my treasury and I'd rather not that. Let's bring you closer as well. And this is more to answer a question that was in the comments and folks on the mention of comments I should mention if you've been enjoying this series if you would like to see it continue please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It uh, does make a very big difference in letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel. Uh, it lets me investigate my misconceptions in terms of uh, what is and isn't possible. I could have sworn that our militia uh, our, 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 our archer militia was never actually capturing the bandit camps, but I guess I was mistaken. So thank you for mentioning that in the uh, comments. Uh, but yes, I do read all the, all the comments as well for feedback, opinions, thoughts, whatever it might be. 
share them. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, you might want to consider doing that too. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this message and do what with this wealth. I'm thinking... I'm thinking we take it into our treasury because we just spent some to get this uh, mercenary band. Our regional wealth is looking fantastic. So I think, yes, we'll go ahead and uh, put it into our treasury. We don't need more regional wealth right now. We're okay. This belongs to my treasury now. Recoup our costs twice over. Can't complain about that. And let's go ahead and disband this mercenary unit. I have no need for them right now. So off they go. No more charges coming out of my pocket. And uh, back to our town. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. All right, everyone's hard at work getting this house built. It's very chilly weather. <laughs> Otherwise, how are we looking in terms of meeting people's needs? We have more room at this market. Six free stall locations. So yeah, as... Uh... Oh yeah, look at that. Food variety is looking really good, actually. Those houses at the bottom there, they've got two for two. One needs a third. And once the bread starts to come through, I'm sure people will be uh, more than satisfied. Clothing, again, we're trying to solve for that right now. Uh, we've got our additional cobbler. We're going to get um, a, a tailor as well. And fuel is looking great across the board. Excellent. So we've, we've solved our, uh, our supply problem. Good stuff. Good stuff. We also... You know what? I've got the influence for it. Why wait? I've been talking about doing this for so very long. I see no reason to uh, hesitate any further. This is the obvious expansion path in my mind. Like up over here, sure, we have a rich uh, animal deposit and a rich berry deposit. That's all well and good. Um, over here, we've got rich stone, which I don't quite care for, to be perfectly frank. And so, yeah, this, this makes the obvious next step. We've been talking about it forever. Let's go ahead and claim Zvao, Zvao, not sure, uh, with influence. Press our claims towards this region. Yes, indeed. And it'll take a bit of time for us to get the claim pushed through. But as soon as it does happen, we'll be able to establish a colony over here and slowly grow that into a city as well. Now, what I'm going to do for our city over here is take a much more historical approach uh, to the actual layout of the city. I'm going to do what many of you have suggested of like, oh, well, you know, the church should be in the center and housing surrounding it. Uh, what we've taken, you know, for our own city is uh, the... The Lord's Manor and the church are in the center, and we're slowly going to curve around it. Uh, but uh, but here we'll have a much smaller community, I think, and we'll center it around a church. Uh, we'll establish our um, iron mine over here, make it a deep mine, so we'll have an infinite supply of iron that we'll then bring back to our main city. Well, we can do it a couple ways. We can bring it back to our main city where it gets turned into all kinds of goods, or we can process the iron over here as well, uh, making it a slightly larger city than just uh, a couple of small homes, uh, process it into the various kinds of goods and, and, and resources and military equipment, and then ship it back to, uh, to our home village, hometown in that form. Curious what you guys think, uh, what your preferences are. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think we should uh, just send the raw material back and keep this our hub, add the smithies and stuff like that? Do you think we should do all the smithing over here, or why not both? Is a medieval town truly a medieval town without a smith or two? So perhaps both is the right answer there. Anyway, uh, looking pretty good overall. Pleased with the uh, the extent of these fields. Let's make sure that tree gets taken care of because it's going to bother me otherwise. Logging camp, let's go ahead and tell you to work for at least a little bit of time. Just up over here. I'm going to assume this is a tree for the logging camp and not for the uh, woodcutter's lodge. I could be mistaken. So we could go ahead and, at least momentarily, tell you to work here as well. Sure. Once that clears out, we'll go ahead and uh, and reassign them over here. Looks like we've made a bit of progress, so that's good. Yeah, I do want to start that curve soon and see just how far this market can go. What's fun, though, is that I wouldn't mind putting a market down over here because then it feels like one big market. I quite like that, actually. So we might do, yeah, the market here, it extends to over here, and that... Uh, yeah, and then the, the curve continues. Obviously, I'm I'm exaggerating when I'm going like, yeah, it's going to go all the way up to there. It'll take us time to get there, but that's the plan. We'll circle around the central manor and church combination with, it seems, the orchard in between. The votes, it's interesting, have been shifting. I've still got the orchard in the lead, but not by as much as before. Now we've got the orchard in the lead with uh, level three burgage plots kind of near the manor, uh, implying the... Uh, 
the, the, the higher, like, citizenry is, is close to the Lord. Um, which is also an interesting thought. I love the storytelling you can get out of Mana Lords. I love the storytelling. Uh, on which note, why don't we take a moment to just enjoy our, uh, our town again. Again, folks, I mean, let me know uh, what your preference is in terms of what we do more or less of in terms of uh, just enjoying the view from time to time. I see a lot of you are enjoying that. I'm enjoying it myself as well. It's so serene. For, for a city building game with combat, the moments of serenity are just so... What's the word I'm looking for? Dominating, I guess. When I think about Mana Lords, I think about this. The distant hunting camp. The herb garden attached to the forager's hut. And the lone trader. Marching through the snow. In the dead of winter. You can almost feel like you're there. My goodness. My goodness. look at that. Off in the distance, our farmhouse is built. That uh, future tailor's uh, home is being built as well. The windmill to come soon. Not in a super rush, obviously. We actually need something to put to the mill. And obviously, the hustle and bustle of, uh, of town. Look at the lighting right now as well. Just the atmosphere it creates. Man. And of course, let's not forget the tavern. Oh yeah, and God's house. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. We continue to claim. Again, it does take some time. That's why I didn't want to wait too much longer. And you can see it's drained a lot of our influence, but we'll get more as soon as more uh, raiders and bandits come. We got 14 days until the bandits arrive, so it seems as though it will in fact be March. And I wonder if, I wonder if... Yeah. Disbanding those guys means they're not available right now. This low is here. Selbitz is here, really. I can get a mercenary band over there. Well, let's see where the raiders arrive from. Hopefully it's not right in our face over here. Uh, if it is, then we'll have to raise our militia, and that's fine. It'll be a costly battle. Probably we'll lose at least a couple of people, um, but that's okay. If it's in a more distant land, then we'll go ahead and... Uh, hire some mercenaries and, and, and march them over to take care of them instead. By the way, I should mention that my plan is to no longer chase after this iron deposit. I don't re remember if I mentioned that last session, uh, but now, especially given that we are laying claim to this rich iron deposit, I don't think the Lord would want his forest tarnished further than it needs to be in order to acquire something he can get from somewhere else. So we are uh, adjusting our approach a little bit. Shall we speed time up ever so slightly? Keeping an eye on this raider's near counter because, uh... Knowing me, I'm... <laughs> gonna forget about it. Enamored by some beautiful shot or the other. This burgage plot is almost done. Waiting until March, this windmill. Low priority, under construction. It's getting its... It's getting what it needs. Can I... I can place another road over here. For the malt house. I wonder, actually. I wonder. I quite like this layout, actually. We've got a couple of small stables. We've got this hitching post. Put another hitching post here. This can be upgraded. Yeah. So, we, you know, if we want to, we can get oxen here. Obviously, we need to actually get uh, heavy plow, which is what I'm tempted to get next. This will allow us to enable... Uh, this allows us to uh, employ oxen at the farmhouse to make the uh, plowing lot faster. And then we can actually um, make the fields even bigger. And, and, you know, sustainably make them bigger. So this is what I'm tempted to do next. We'd have to sacrifice rye cultivation, but we don't need it. You know, our, our emmer, our, our wheat, is doing just fine. It's going to be doing just fine, hopefully with a couple years of rotation and fallow land. Um, it, so many of these are so tempting to, like, pick up uh, from just, like, a pure roleplay perspective. Uh, but, like, I'd love to have an apiary. Are you kidding me? I'd love to produce wax. Are you kidding me? This is all cool stuff. Uh, but, pragmatism, I think, dictates we get the uh, heavy plow next. And it's not that far away. We just need three level three burgage plots or higher. As soon as some of this construction is done, I think what we'll do is uh, we'll let this burgage plot finish. 
We'll get the uh, sheep farm and windmill done. Ah, see, I want the um, I want the trader as well. So where is my livestock trading post? I feel like I interrupted myself earlier when I was explaining how you get sheep. They don't just pop out of nowhere. You got to trade them in. <laughs> I apologize if I didn't finish that thought. Got distracted by something else. But I'm thinking we tuck it in over here. This little like uh, this was this was like purpose built. This fits perfectly. Um, so if we tuck it in there. What if we do something like this? Like so. There we go. And let's go ahead and build our livestock trading post. Yeah, perfectly there. I could pull it back a little bit and then have the road you know, kind of bump out. Now this feels nice. Sure. So that'll bring in the sheep. It'll bring in the oxen and stuff as well. Like it feels like a bit more fitting to have it over here than over here. This is the goods uh, trading post. This is the livestock trading post. And I could actually extend the road out to connect to this main uh, main area. I'll see how I feel about that. I'll see how the trader comes through. And if he starts going all the way around here or if he kind of naturally cuts a path that then I can turn into a road. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're working on the sheep farm now. Windmill can probably still wait a little bit because... Again, we got to actually harvest before the mill is necessary. So that's all well and good. And once this is done, we'll get the livestock trading post done. Sure, I don't mind this being a higher priority because the livestock will take some time to get here. Lord knows we have enough uh, regional wealth to uh, get it. And it looks like our burgage plot over here is done. Let's go ahead and immediately expand it. 27. Yes, let's immediately expand that living space. Uh, let's hope that our food and fuel and all can reach this far and uh, and we can upgrade it. I'm fairly confident. I'm fairly confident. I'm willing to uh, take this wager. Let's put it that way. Willing to take this wager. We have about four months of food, six months of fuel. Perhaps we get the hunting camp up and running again. Not too many animals to take care of right now. You know what I mean? Got a couple of chicken coops down here. A lot of chicken. A lot of chicken up over here. I would like that to be something a bit more industrial, something a bit more, uh, you know, market related, I guess. Z Zvau? We could rename this as well. If you have any name suggestions, drop those in the comments too. You know, Adel's Ball was renamed after all. So if you have a thought for, for this one, drop it in the comments and we'll see what we can uh, pop in. But we'll probably hold off on expanding there until we get some of this work done. I've got my claim in place. I'll, I'll expand my uh, my grip on these lands, but uh, the actual construction perhaps will wait until some of this stuff is done. Anyway, once all this stuff is done, I want to upgrade the wooden church so we can get some tier 3 buildings going, and then we can perhaps explore the heavy plow. Uh, might not be for this season, might be for next, or it might be in time for harvest because the oxen will help with uh, the movement of, uh, 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 of the harvested goods as well. Go ahead and speed time up ever so slightly. Eight days left for the Raiders' attack. New mercenary companies, companies will be available as well at the time if the month does flip. And maybe we'll have someone more conveniently placed. Beautiful. Regent has been claimed and expanding is relatively simple. All you got to do is establish a settler's camp at the cost of 250 treasury. So again, there's a reason to have a decently sized treasury. Uh, there's one more that you haven't yet seen, which has to do with our retinue, which you'll see once we get the uh, the manor built up. But this settler's camp is basically what our entire game started with. You'll remember, I forget exactly where it was placed, but uh, there was that small little camp that had a bunch of like the homeless tents. It had like some supplies and stuff. That's what this 250 uh, investment does. Now, there will be more options in terms of what the Settlers' Camp actually looks like in the future. For the time being, it replicates what we started the game with, and then you can kind of expand from that uh, outward. But uh, like I said, we'll wait until some of this stuff is taken care of first. Uh, we've got enough on our plate right now. Oh, good, that tree has been cleared. It was literally just cleared. I think the timber is being pulled back, in, like, literally right now. So that's great. Perfect timing. Logging camp. Let's go ahead and turn your attention now back to. This general area, chip away. Same thing for you guys, at the woodcutter's lodge. Chipping away in this general area. 
And eventually we might move the woodcutter's lodge further along so that they're not traveling as far, though ultimately they still have to get the firewood back to the, 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 the storehouse. Um, so you want to find a sweet spot. This still feels like it. We'll, uh, we'll explore further down the line. Alright, we time up. Five days until the raiders attack. It's just going to be a matter of where they show up and uh, what mercenaries we have on hand. I'd rather not draw on the militia. I'd rather not draw on the people. Because there's uh, much work to be done you know, before the harvest season. And I don't want to... Uh... Well, not just that. Oh, no. They're going to attack right when uh, we'll want to be taking care of the fields. <laughs> of course they will. Cheeky bandits. Cheeky, cheeky bandits. And so I especially don't want to uh, pull my peasants away from the fields. That's going to hurt us for a whole year. There's no time to waste when it comes to farming. So... We'll, we'll almost certainly get mercenaries. We have just one day for the raiders' attack to kick off. And slow time down for a second here. Take a look at how we're doing. Our food variety is dwindling again. Again, it's just a matter of the flow of resources. Just a matter of the flow of resources. And again, remember, it's not just... It's not that they're going hungry. It's that they don't have variety. Oh, okay, some of these guys are going hungry. <laughs> at, the, at the bottom there and at the far distance there. Uh, some of these guys are going hungry. But it's okay, it's okay. As soon as the berry deposit replenishes, um, as soon as the uh, animals replenish a bit more as well, we'll get some families over here. Farming is obviously seasonal, and it looks like a band of raiders was seen near Nuslo. Nuslo? Either way, the raiders attack. Let's take a look at where they are. So all the way up over here. Ah, there they are. Brigands. Marching on through. How big are we talking here? Just one unit of 18? The brigage plot completed. The uh, expansion to it. Just a unit of 18 brigands. No, there's got to be more among the trees, right? Alright, let's, uh, let's keep an eye on them. Now might be a little early, and I want to see what their actual strength is before I raise uh, any mercenaries. I don't see... They're not, like, swarming us from everywhere. It's just a small group. Once they get to here, I think we'll go ahead and get some mercenaries coming through. Well, actually, I should check. And these guys arrive right there. The ravenous vultures. They're expensive, though. 110. I can have them for five months. Okay, that should be plenty of time. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get them in. And hopefully we're not, like, chasing them to the end. That's my concern now. Will I just spend my entire time chasing these guys down, wasting 110 uh, of my of my personal wealth? Am I better off getting these mercenaries at uh, Selbitz, actually? That doesn't seem like a good spot. That's all the way over here. So, you know, we're racing back to town. <laughs> Alright. New slow it is. And if it's a waste of a little bit of money, so be it. The Ravenous Vultures. Let's see how ravenous they truly are. Hire this company. Sign the contract. And let's get to work. Come on. Quickly now. Are they going to watch march through my own land all the way up to the... Ah, th no! Why? Why would you not march on the road? Okay, hopefully these guys are just walking as opposed to running. Yes, they are. Okay, good. So I should be able to cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a race, but I should be able to cut them off. Let's go. They're all melee too, no range here. That's I mean I knew that obviously as I hired them, but I was really hoping they'd show up here and I'd be able to close that gap. Watch this ends up having to be our militia after all. Damn, alright. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. The tail end of February it looks like. We'll uh we'll get the fields going soon. Upgrade was done. Yeah, food and fuel soon to come. The flow of fuel must have been slowed down by uh, us going all the way there. Let me take a look at the large storehouse here. Oh no, we have firewood here. Hmm. If I assign another family to the woodcutter's lodge, they might establish an additional uh, stall which would supply. Are we closing the gap? I can't tell. Ah, good. We've drawn their attention. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we have drawn their attention. They've seen us. We we'll no longer need to run to position. 
What's the ground looking like? Relatively flat. The high ground and stuff does make a difference. Now, granted, this is a mercenary band, so I'm not as attached to, uh, to these men's lives, but, uh, you know, still want to be careful. Push forward, get into position. We fight on the open field. Warm up. And it looks like it's just this one enemy unit of brigands. Easy enough to take out. Hold on, why are you threatening me like that game? Okay. Oh, we had another family move in as well. No, a family member joined. Fair enough. We're at 27. Have room for two more. Excellent. Still February. Snow is clearing. The battle lines are drawn. Let's eliminate these brigands, these outlaws, once and for all. Come on. Charge them down. Let's try something here. Pull you to the side. Pull you to the side. Let them come to us. Sergeant. I wonder, I wonder. Give ground. I love that the lines aren't super clean. I wanna, what I want to try and do is I want to pull back. I just want to see how it looks. If I try to pull back a little bit. And we draw them out and then get a rear charge. Now granted, given how things have laid out, I actually don't have to wait that long, so why would I? Let's charge it. Let's go. That other unit back there just chilling. Bring you guys in as well. Love to see it. Yeah, pretty ravenous these vultures, I'd say. These brigands don't stand a chance. They are putting up a fight, though. They haven't broken yet. Oh, speak the devil. There it is. Gained a little bit of influence there as well. I think uh, we no longer need these guys. New mercenary company available, meaning it is a new month. So before we address our military matters, let's quickly turn our attention back to here. Get the farmhouse. With three families. Construction will slow down tremendously, but I think that is perfectly all right. Because we must now tend to the fields. And that takes a long time. But... Back to this mercenary band. A glorious victory won. Let's disband them. I don't need to spend more money on them. Away they go. Beautiful. Flee. Like whipped cur. Truly a shameful display by the, uh, the brigands there. Good stuff. All right. Protected ourselves from that raid. Now we can turn our attention back to our home and, and uh, the future. This breadbasket, right? Uh, that'll be good. That'll be good. Cheap farm will hopefully be done soon as well. We've got the livestock trading post done. One family left unassigned. Decisions, decisions. I mean, timing on this is essential. So I do want to prioritize this. Um, but perhaps we don't need as many planks right now. So let's get the saw pit unassigned. Get a family assigned here. And let's bring in sheep. Let's import, let's say... 20. I think I have room enough for that, right? This pasture has room for 31. Okay, so I can get in even more. And you can absolutely get involved in breeding sheep. If I take a look at the development screen here, you'll see sheep breeding is an option. Sheep grazing on the pastures slowly multiply. Uh, and then you can, of course, export those uh, those sheep. If I head to, 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 to here, I can flip to export and I can make some money off of, uh, off of selling sheep. Um... What I could do here as well is get oxen for cheaper. It'll cost me 10 if I import them at the livestock trading post, whereas at the hitching post, it costs me 20. So it is now cheaper to, to get the livestock from there. So if we do decide, ah, you know what? I shouldn't have built this road here. I wanted to leave this clear for more hitching posts and stables. Got room for one more here. Maybe, maybe two more? Nah, one more, I think. And that's fine. You know what? That's probably all I was going to be able to fit either way, so no regrets. Uh, and that'll hopefully make it easier to actually bring the oxen over via the road 
uh, up to here. Yeah. Okay, cool. That works out, actually. Alright, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. People are getting to work. We want to talk about serenity, by the way. Watching, uh, watching a bunch of people work the field. Come back to it. I want to show you some of the systems in place. So, you'll see over time we'll track the uh, plowing, then the sowing, then the growth of the crop itself. We can always harvest early if we're desperate, or you know if we time things poorly and the winter is, is about to strike, uh, we can we can we can harvest a bit early, uh, and then ultimately there's a harvest progress as well. I'm hopefully going to be able to get a proper full season over here. We'll see what kind of yield this level of fertility gives us. Um, that's pretty high. That's pretty good. Uh, I know it's like you see the bright green and you go like 60%. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and then you can participate in crop rotation. As you can see, it brings back lost fertility. Crop rotation triggers after the harvest season ends. Keeping the field fallow regenerates the most fertility, which is what we're doing over here. We're leaving it fallow. Uh, what happens is after... I think after you sow, I forget exactly when, you can go ahead and say what the second and third year of the crop rotation should be. And then it kind of like lets the peasants know exactly how to take care of that crop rotation and to try and manage the um, the fertility over long periods of time. What I like as well visually is you can see how much progress is being uh, had, is being made, because you can see the color shift. So it's a good visual indicator. You can see how well you're doing, or of course you can go ahead and actually take a look at the number and feel more or less comfortable by having seen that. Um, but yeah, moving at a decent rate there. We're waiting for our sheep to come through. Um, this building will be done soon enough and down over here. Hmm. We'll get them taken care of. Now we have two... Ah, good. They're already getting their clothing. Excellent. Um, two families now. So. To sign one. To hunting. The other option is I could... Uh, you know what, actually? Hunting is forever. Sewing... <laughs> sowing is for only so long. Plowing and sowing is it was what needs to get done before we can leave the fields alone. And so yeah, you got seasonal work, you got the not just crop rotation but uh but uh employment rotation as well, I suppose. How are we looking? Pretty good actually. Feeling pretty good. Why you got all these planks? <laughs> just holding on to these planks. We have leather, or are we lacking leather? Because that could be the real issue here, because we we're probably lacking in hides. Yeah, that's what's going on here. Oh, I mean, we stopped the, the hunting, so that makes sense. And the uh, goats here aren't providing us with enough hides, I suppose. So what we might want to do is, uh, like I said, continue expanding, get some more uh, goat sheds, get some more goats, get some more hides to sustain this... Uh, this movement. The other option is, of course, to get the goat shed somewhere over here, right? And then again, it becomes a part of this whole process. The hides get sent perhaps directly to the tannery. Maybe they get stored in the storehouse I'm planning on putting down over here. And so we have our little, you know, self-sustaining corner over here where things get a little smelly. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, scent is not yet implemented in the game. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a bigger problem. But, uh, it's cool that that's something that's being uh, considered and developed. But uh, yeah, for the time being, I think we can... Yeah, your nose gets kind of... You get kind of nose blind, right? That's that's what happens. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably do that, actually. Got a couple of goat sheds here. So you've got the, sh the sheep, the goats, the cobbler, the, the, the tailor. Maybe got another tailor or cobbler somewhere back over here. Yeah, feeling good about that. Good progress being made over here as well. Can't wait to provide them with oxen to do this work with. <laughs> That's gonna make such a big difference. Here as well. Two of them chipping away.
I'm excited. I'm excited for these fields. Been waiting for this since episode one. How are we looking? 30% here. 24% here. It's not even the end of March. We probably could have gone bigger with the number of families we had available. But I wanted to play it safe, obviously. And, like, you know, realistic as well. Plus, there's a whole field that we're not actually tending to this time around, right? So, let's not forget that. Windmill progress continues. Again, low priority. Plenty of time for that. The sheep farm. Let's go ahead and make you medium priority now. Does the livestock arrive? Not just yet. Oh, here they come. Look at that, man. Summer's coming soon, and soon the beating sun. This is a city builder. It looks like <laughs> the visual fidelity is like that of an art of a third person RPG. Man, that's guess right. That view coming in with the church in the distance as the shepherd shepherds his uh, flock of one, as it were. Obviously, he's just a trader, but uh, there's just something about. Something about it. And look at this. Look at the size of our town, actually. We've grown quite a bit. Like, we've grown quite, quite large. Oh, and those birds flying by. Oh, this is something special, folks. This is something special. Love it. I absolutely love it. Four months of food. Working on that. House supply looking probably not great. Oh, okay. No, better actually. 84%. 87%. If I can just get a bit more food to these guys over here, we can get the uh, the tailor set up. Like I said, I'm confident we'll be able to make it happen. I'm confident. Eggs are starting to see more, uh, more reach as well. That's good. Plenty of ale too. Family working the tavern. Excellent. Yeah, I'm looking forward to upgrading these guys. It'll create a very nice town center. Time for the church soon. Time for the church upgrade soon. Keep farm is up next. Look at this. Family's toiling away. These families tilling away. But hey. No pain, no grain, am I right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. But hey. No pain, no grain, am I right? Oh, oh God. <laughs> Please don't have me assassinated. Oh, my goodness. This is great. Oh, this is great. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, can you, like... Look at the size of these fields. Our people will never go hungry. Famous last words, I know. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. The lighting now as the clouds coming over. I'm trying to find like the perfect shot, you know, that really captures our efforts from this episode so far. What's that about a new nipple? <laughs> Some of these voice lines, I swear. This is great. Alright. Making good progress. I really want the sheep to come through. Got a couple showing up. Soon. They really come from... They're really bringing the sheep from, from all over. Minimal chance of inbred sheep. Absolutely minimal chance. Where's our good shepherd here? 
I've lost him. Ah, there he is. Run up this way. Oh, hang on. Did he already deliver the sheep? He must have, but I missed it. Got so distracted by, uh, by the game's beauty again. Oh, there he is. Yeah, hey, buddy. Right to the pasture. Now, again, the, uh, the trading post does have a bit of pasture space and a bit of stable space as well. You don't necessarily want to use that. Looks like we're flattening away over here. Construction is going to start soon. And I assume that timber is for this windmill. Oh no, this windmill's looking pretty well done. Where's that timber going? Never mind. 27, 28, we have... Soon we'll, we'll want another building. Soon. Food and fuel. Yeah, we're in a bit of a rough spot right now. We'll be fine soon though, especially with, with all this going. And again, I can just import food, honestly, in the meantime. Part of me doesn't want to out of pure hubris, but perhaps I should. Perhaps I should. The Dyer's Workshop isn't being worked right now because we have no berries, I assume. So why don't we send the person, the family from the Dyer's Workshop over to hunt instead. There. We'll not rely on uh, outsiders if I, if I don't have to. Alright, good stuff. Again, once the uh, the fields are tended to as much as needs uh, tending to, we'll uh, turn our attention to all the other work that's been left behind. The manor remains partly completed. The uh, tax office is still to do. Oh, I love this track. This is going to look exactly how I wanted it to look. I'm so pleased, I'm so pleased. Alright, sheep farm is done. No families to assign just quite yet. <laughs> Almost done here. Well, almost done with the plowing. We still need to sow as well. Keep these families at it. Still only March, so I think we're making decent progress over here. It's not until June that the crops start to grow, so I might have actually over-invested in the farmhouse, to be perfectly honest. But that doesn't hurt, as... Oh man, I wish I'd caught that sheep just bounding over. Still just the one sheep here, though. The rest are still making their way over. They might still be making their way out, actually. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Okay, it's just the food that's the issue, then. Church is okay, water's okay. I assume the tavern will maybe be... Yeah, it looks like... Well, no. Here. Yeah, it looks like the tavern is going to be fine as well. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool. Speed time up. Let's get these fields done, right? And then we can move on to other things. Hunting camp. Oh no, Peter. Resting until healed. That's not great. We do have the herb garden, but uh, it hasn't been tended to in a while. But here, why don't we go ahead and... Well, I'd like to at least deliver this meat and th th this these hides over before switching over to the, the forager hut. Look at that, actually dragging the carcass over and everything. Like... And then skinning it and gutting it and all that good stuff. Good things take time. Yeah, we've made good progress over here. That's good. Logging camp, you still have plenty of room. We've done a lot of construction lately. We've done a lot of construction lately. So we've emptied out that logging camp quite nicely. Now look at these fields. Almost done. Looks like rain. Got real dark. Real gloomy. There it is. <laughs> I love that you can tell. I love that it's not like all of a sudden, bam. It's like, nope. Very slow transition. Oh, here we've begun sewing. Wanted to show what that looked like. 
So she's going to walk around, find a fresh hatch. Or, <laughs> where are you going? Oh, okay, back to, fair enough. Because there is still a little bit of land that needs tilling, so very well, but caught a bit of sewing there. Where are you going, buddy? There we go. You can see the, like, individual seeds and stuff. Just, like, the level of detail is kind of wild. But yeah, they're getting to work. Hopefully we'll see a decent barley harvest. I mean, the, the fertility was a little bit on the low side, but hopefully it'll be all right. Yeah, it looks like we're we're sowing now. Everyone's sowing. Bit left to, uh, to plow, it looks like. Yeah, 97%, so just a little bit left. Otherwise, mostly sowing. Cool, and again, I like that you can see the visual representation of progress, and even here you can see the tones, the colors that, that tell you how much progress you've made. Looks like we've done a bit of sowing here. Ah, uh, no. Misread there, my bad, that's my bad. But, soon enough we'll start sowing. Not much left to, 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 to plow here, good. By the end of the month, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be done. Meat farm is good, meat's coming through. Soon we'll have the food variety we need to upgrade you to get the actual tailor in place, and uh, otherwise, yeah, the fields are in place. We'll uh, we'll see some bountiful harvest, hopefully. But knowing my luck, we'll get struck by drought rather than anything else. But folks, all that and more to come next time. This is where we're calling it a session. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below, as always, makes a very big difference in letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel, what I should do more or less of, and I do read all the comments, so I will take into account any feedback, thoughts, opinions, and I'll try and respond to any questions that you may have as well. Uh, but yes, as our wonderful folk continue toiling away, I must bid you farewell. If you have not yet subscribed, consider doing so if you've been enjoying this series, but otherwise, folks, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. That keeps us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.